Hello, hello, it's June Olson with Junebug Creations. Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator coming to you live from Whitefish, Montana on this wonderful Wednesday morning. Woohoo! It's kind of cloudy here and it's supposed to rain and or snow because that's spring in Montana. <laughs> it's kind of one of those things where like, whoo! All right, what are we doing here? Are we going to get sun? Are we going to get snow? Are we going to get rain? Are we going to get wind? Are we going to get all of it all in the same day? It happens. It really does. Yesterday was pretty snowy and icky. It stuck for a bit, but then it melted away because of rain. So, yes, I am looking forward to real spring for us. I'm wearing a t-shirt today just to kind of feel like it's getting warmer, but I have my long sleeve t-shirt underneath it because it's not really warm. <laughs> It's not really warm. All right, so it is Wednesday, therefore it is paper pumpkin play date. And normally it was at five o'clock and I've decided to bump it back up to the morning. We might have to play with some times until I figure out what works with my family. Um, nine o'clock was kind of pushing it. So we'll see, might have to make it just a smidget later. So I got the new kit, woohoo. But before we do that, I want to remind you Today, today only, is free shipping. Yes, free shipping. And just so you know, free ship or shipping itself is $7.95, so $7.95, or it is, um, let me check this, or it is 11% of your order. So when you place an order, if you uh, purchase more than $80, it's going to go up from there. It's $7.95 for anything typically under $80 and then um, yeah that's your base and then it goes 11% so whichever is greater so today is free shipping all day <laughs> all day today if you need any help feel free to um, message me or email me and I am happy to help you um, up above I went ahead and put or well up above for Facebook and down below for YouTube, I went ahead and put the links for the paper pumpkin. Now the paper pumpkin prepaid, you would get the free shipping on that. And then if you subscribe before May 2nd, you get the current rate. If you do prepaid, you get the current rate. Um, on May 2nd, paper pumpkin will be going up a dollar per kit. So then your prepaids are gonna go up and then of course your month to month will be $24.50 instead of $23.50. So if you're on the fence and you've been trying to figure out whether you wanna do paper pumpkin, now's the time to do it before the price goes up. Because if you do the prepaids, whether it's one month, three months, six months, or 12 months, if you do the prepaids, you're locked into that price. Okay, so you don't, then you don't have to pay it. But you gotta subscribe before May 2nd. I recommend you subscribe before May, period. I would do it here in April when you know for sure that you're locked in. Good morning, Missy. Stained glass? Yes. So my question up above or down below, depending on whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, is where do you typically see stained glass? And yes, I have seen most of them at, uh, in church or in a church. And, um, I, but I do have a couple, I have a cousin and a friend um, who actually make stained glass. Um, he, the friend, her husband um, does the stained glass and he did the stained glass for our church in Tucson, which was really beautiful, it was St. Francis. And then um, my cousin makes all kinds of stained glass pieces as well. You wish you had another, well, um, but I don't know if that would work, Missy. Um, I don't know that you can have, you can, I guess you would have to have two running at, with different email addresses. You can't have two subscriptions, two prepaid subscriptions on the same email address. You would have to have two separate email addresses. And the code, I don't know how long it lasts, so I don't know that you could buy two prepaid codes now, use one, and then next year use the, the other. I don't know how long they last. I think there's a limit of how long they last. I'm not sure. You know, that would be something that we would have to ask um, Stampin' Up! customer service. I'm not sure whether they are unlimited. I mean, they're prepaid, 
So I would think that they might be, but um, yeah, I'm not going to worry about that because celebration is a great time to renew your paper pumpkin subscription. So that would be a good thing. Uh, doesn't matter. Don't have the money anyway. Well, <laughs> yeah, that, there's that. Yeah, because a year-long subscription um, is $243 right now. Um, $243.50 because you pay for uh, 11 months and you get one month free. So it's pretty good. It's a pretty good deal. All right, so let's get started on this new kit because I haven't even opened it yet and I want to see it. I know Missy has hers. Missy, did you open it or were you waiting? I always, I always try to wait for you all or to do it live at least with it because I love sharing the excitement of opening the kit because, oh, it's just so fun to see what's inside because they always just outdo themselves. Every time I think, man, they can't get better than this, they do. Still one of my favorites. What's one of your favorite ones? Um, Missy, which one is your favorite? One of my all-time favorites is probably the sunflowers last year. So this one is called All the Little Things. All the Little Things. And we're back to just a regular box. All right, so we are going with Shaded Spruce. See, I didn't even know what color was in there, so I couldn't grab my stamp, my ink pad. So just for those of you that might be catching this new, yours was the sunflowers. I figured since you love sunflowers, yes, remember the mistake. Oh yes, I will. Thank you. I will um, point that out. Missy freaked me out with a, <laughs> a text message showing me the pictures of the instructions, but the everything was blocked out. But there's a typo in it, and I'll show you all what the typo is so that when you're putting yours together, it's not so confusing. But I was worried that her instructions came with everything all blacked out. <laughs> so <laughs> she kind of freaked me out there. All right, so this is the ink pad. We're using Shaded Spruce. All of our kits, all the inclusive kits come with your ink pad. The all-inclusive kits, they're all-inclusive because everything is in the kit that you need to make the projects as designed in this kit. And so they always send out little ink spots. Sometimes you get two ink spots. Um, I like to use my larger pad just for convenience and because I use these for giveaways in my local classes. Here is the stamp set. Let's see, what do we have? We have, I'm grateful for all the little things you do. Celebrate today. Enjoy your day with deepest sympathy. Nice. Oh, I actually need that because I have to go to a memorial next week. Um, so I guess I'll be making one of these into a sympathy card. All right. Oh, and look, see, I even have my printout ready. Next month's is exploring in color. So the new in color colors that are coming out in May will be used in this kit. But I love that it's outdoorsy. Living here in Montana, outdoorsy is just the thing, right? So I love that it's outdoorsy. And this time around, look, we got our little box organizers. I can't wait to play with that. We'll play with this on um, next week's live, not today. But this will be fun to kind of check out and see how we can organize it and what all we can keep in it. You can use it just to keep all of your ink spots in it like they have here. Or I've seen pictures where you can also rearrange it and keep other little things, maybe like your little leftovers from kits. I have here some, I think it was these. These are some leftovers from kits. And so that would be fun to see about keeping in here. That would be handy. So I'll set this aside for now and this one, and we'll play with that next week. And then if you want to subscribe, if you subscribe before May 2nd, you will get in on this in color kit. Super fun, super cool. All right, let's see what this one looks like. Stained glass, I love stained glass. On a scale of one to 10, how much do you like looking at stained glass? I would say I'm a 10, especially in some of the European churches that I've seen. I'm sure they have the churches um, back east, probably Missy where you are. They probably do have a lot of um, stained glass in the churches um, because it's a lot of European sort of stuff. And uh, I just 
I think it's gorgeous. But the places I've seen churches mainly are in, um, in Germany. So I know that there's lots of stained glass in all the different old churches over there. All right, so let's see. It looks like we have some iridescent rhinestones right here. Super fun. Oh, we have some baker's twine. It looks like calypso coral and black. And then we have our uh, dimensionals as well. Ooh, let's put that out of the way. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, and it's a die cut. Woo, all right. So there's those. And these are the card bases. All right, so there's some card bases. Ooh, look at these beautiful envelopes. These are pretty. Nice. Set those aside. All right, some more card bases. Right here. Pretty. All right, so that's six. Must be another card base in here somewhere. Here we go. Then there's this one, which is just all white. That's, I don't think I've ever seen one where they do it all white. Nice. Then we have these cutouts and these cutouts. Ooh, look at that. Look how pretty that is. Oh, those are gorgeous. All right. And then we have some more little papers and some more little tight die cuts and then we have our glue dots and for our glue dots of course we want to make sure to use our handy dandy um take your pick tool all right hold on missy's chatting away here i had a friend who used to make stained glass i don't know if she still does all right um yes remember the mistake sunflowers you saw one organized with glue glue twine and a few stamp sets and some other things looks like they were planning to travel with it oh that's a good idea you could have all your tools in there for traveling and then in one kit and then take the kit you're working on that would be a grand idea you love seeing stained glass many beautiful churches in the philly area yeah because that's an older area i mean there's lots of history there so a lot of these old historic uh, towns are going to have a lot of the stained glass. Got confused with the pre-folded bases. Oh, is those are those the ones you were talking about? Yeah, that's pretty that's pretty funny that you got confused. They're in here somewhere. All right, so then we want our chipboard for stamping because photopolymer stamps stamp better when you've got some give underneath. And here are our cards. Oh my gosh, look how gorgeous those cards are. Oh, I can't wait to make them. So on the back, it gives us all the ingredients that are in the kit. It also gives us the colors that coordinate with the kit. And to see it, I'm going to have to turn on the light. Balmy blue, basic black, calypso coral, granny apple green, petal pink, poppy parade, and shaded spruce. And I love that they gave us the shaded spruce as our ink color because I like having my sentiments in a darker color versus a lighter color. Then they've also given us two or three different um, alternate ideas. Um, this Much Love, that's using one of the stamp sets from the Spring Mini. Um, and then this one is using those um, hexagons. Are there hexagons in here? I don't think I saw hexagons, so I'm not sure which stamp set that comes from. And then this is just some alternating in what they've already got here. So cute ideas. So the uh, blooper or the mistake in the instructions that Missy is talking about is it says card one, card two, card one. But it's actually card one, card two, card three. And then here in this instructions, it's correct. It's card one, card two, card three. So there's just a little typo. The nice thing is they give us these no fail instructions. So even if the numbers are wrong, where things go and how they line up is not wrong. Plus they give you a ruler. So really all you have to hunt down is a pair of scissors in your house. And I know you have lots of scissors in your house or have at least one pair. All right. And maybe even have one pair de designated strictly for crafting. I have one pair for my paper cutting and then I have one pair designated strictly for ribbon and all my people who come to my classes they know these are the ribbon scissors don't use these for anything else or you might you might get in trouble 
because I get really particular about that. Because when you use your scissors on anything other than the ribbon, it starts to dull them. So you wanna keep your ribbon scissors nice and sharp, otherwise you shred your ribbon when you're trying to cut it. So these are strictly for ribbon, and these are my other cutting scissors. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so let's take a look at these and divvy out our cards. We're going to be doing one of each card, so I'm going to go ahead and put it with the envelope today. And then a lot of times what I do is I will divvy up the whole box and put it into the different envelopes, and that way I know, because this one I may be hard put to come up with alternates, it's probably a good thing I got two of these kits because I'm going to want to play with these as well as um, make the cards as is because I think they're going to be very beautiful cards. So we have one, two, and three. So this goes here. So I'm just going through this stack of stuff to see what goes where. So this one we're going to pop these out. So these are die cuts that you can just pop out. You wanna just pop them out carefully. The more delicate they are, the more careful you wanna be, mind you. And then we'll do this one, which also goes over here with that. And then these little ones go here on card two. And so I usually will separate all these out and stick them in the envelopes. That way they stay together. And then I can see, and that's what I'll probably do later. Then I can see what do I have extra. And then I tend to use those first for my alternate, those extra items, unless I get some amazing idea. And then I keep this, although this isn't very defined. And there's, where's our stamps? There's nothing in here that matches any of these. So I keep these to see, but since there's no real definition to these as to what it is, these may or may not make such a great um, stencil. But I do keep them until I make up my mind on that. So then we've got everything off of there. And then for this one, we need one of these for card one. We need one of these for card two, and we're done with that. And then for card three, we need one of these little short fat banners. And we need this circle for card two, and we need this, I'm not even sure what to call it. It looks like circles in a row. It's not really scalloped because if you look at it closely, it looks like circles in a row. All right, and that's all we need for that one. And then card base, this card base goes, oops, goes here. So we have that. And then this card base is for card number one. Oops. So we can move those over. And this card base is for card number three. And then we have three of these, so I'll use one of them. And we're going to pop this out. Ooh, all right, this is interesting. It pops, oh, there's little pieces that pop out. All right, so I'm just gonna make a little pile right there so I can, this will be interesting. I'm already in my mind thinking that one of these might become a stencil turned over. That's where my brain's going. We'll see, I'm gonna have to play with that because you could use the other side as a stencil and then still use the front side to make your card when you're done using it as a stencil. We'll see, I'll be playing and then I'll show you next week. So besides working on, besides figuring out different ways to alter, or different ways to alter, different ways to use these dividers, we'll also be making at least one card. All right, so let's get this done, and it'll take a while for people to be able to come on in. All right, so Missy says, 
got confused with people. I love hearing you go through the box. You sound so excited. <laughs> I am excited. I'm always excited. That's why I wait to open it on a live. I am. Um, you can hear the wheels turning in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I know. This one really, not all kits. Some kits I don't have anything rolling in my head and I got to go look on Pinterest and YouTube to see what are other people doing it with it. And then things will snowball out of my head. But this time around, they really are because this could be, I don't know, this could make a really kind of pretty pattern. I might have to give that a whirl because then I can still use this side. If I don't use colors that are too dark and it doesn't get bent up or anything, this could be an interesting, interesting pattern there. We'll see, we'll see. Yes, my brain is definitely moving today. It doesn't always, not all kits, like the kit, last month's kit did only a little bit, only a little bit. And mainly I just used the stamps because there were so many stamps to be able to use. All right, so let's get these out of the way. This time I'm back to the just the little set of stamps although <laughs> I dropped dropped them in my lap although you could grab stamp sets from last month's paper pumpkin and really make some really pretty stiff stuff because you have some a flower here now and you've got this to add to it and I'm not sure what those dots are we're going to find out I'm sure all right so let's go ahead and go in order so one two and three so there's Here's one, and we'll go back here to our instructions for number one. We're going to start off with, I'm grateful for all the little things you do. All right. Here we go. I'm going to put that down. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. I forgot to put the block from here into this kit. See, you could totally grab these stamps and mix them up with this because it's all flowery and leafy anyways. So that would be a cool thing. That might be something I do sometime for an alternate is pull up some other... Oh, I don't want to use that one. So this is what it's designed for to use, but I like to use our ergonomic ones. You can see how it's a little thicker and these are easier to use. And I have all different kinds of sizes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to stamp this on here. Now there are two sides to this. The front side is smoother. The back side, you can feel the ridges of the stitching. So you want to make sure you have that face down. And we're going to stamp it in the shaded spruce. All right, so ink that up, tap it around. Try not to always use the in the center of your ink pad because that's where it will dry out first. So you want to just kind of tap it around and you don't want to smoosh it down in there. You can see I'm just lightly tapping. Okay, we call it kiss, kiss, kiss. All right, and then we want to center this between the stitched lines. Okay, there we go. I like that, that just fits. Like I could have gone just a little bit higher to make sure that it was centered better, but that just fits in between, oh, let's see, in between those stitched lines. Can you see the stitched lines? Say comment stitched if you can see the stitched lines. All right, so let's close that before I put something in it and drop it in there. All right, so now we've punched out all of those. And we want to take our bone folder and crease it. And I like to use this flat part. I see a lot of people use this edge, but I find that it doesn't really seem to do it as much because of the way you have to press. It seems for me to be easier if I use this and I just press it along that way and then my card does not bounce up. I used to use these edges and then saw somebody use this edge one time and tried it and it worked way better. I was um, surprised at how much better it worked. All right, so we are going to actually be putting dimensionals. I'm going to use an open pack that I have, um, an open sheet. We're going to be putting dimensionals around this. 
which is a cool, cool idea. Oh, I think I have it the wrong way around. Do I have it the wrong way around? So I'm looking at this pattern. Oh, you can't see that. I'm looking at this. Oh, it's very light. I'm looking at that pattern right there. You can see the dimensionals are the hexagon shapes. And so it tells you exactly where to put them. Ah, I didn't have something popped out. That's why it wasn't matching. Ooh, and I almost got it right on there. Let me just move that over a little. All right, there, now it matches. I missed a piece. That's a good way to know if you miss a piece to match it up that way. All right, and then we'll put one there. And we'll put one there. And I'm actually going to just put one on each leaf essentially because I don't like anything sagging. I don't want things to sag. So I'm going to use a little bit more than they recommend because I don't, I don't like anything sagging. And this is pretty good sized. So I'm going to do that. Use one more right here just to help make sure that it, oh, one more right there. <laughs> so I'm using a lot more than they are recommending and that's okay. Here we go, one more. I just kind of want to make sure that it's all level. If, it's, if, it, if it isn't level, if you get too heavy because you're putting stuff on it. So if you get it too heavy, then it's going to sag. So I like to make sure it's level and I rather use a few too many dimensionals than not enough. So in my mind, putting it on every wide space was what I wanted to do to guarantee that it stays level. All right, so now we're going to turn this over. We have, make sure your card is opening the right way. And then we will put it like this and we will center it on here. Oh, that's lovely. Yes, I am glad I added those extra ones. I like how that just really keeps it level because now we're going to be adding some stuff over here. All right, so we have, they're recommending glue dots go along here for the purpose of today and for the speed of things. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my liquid glue. Sometimes I will use the stamp and seal in place of the glue dots. Um, if you don't have any of that stuff, the glue dots obviously work perfectly because it was designed for that. But I'm going to do just a little bit of glue right along here. Maybe. <laughs> it's morning. It hasn't woken up yet. There we go. My needle, I keep one of these needles, um, I think this is like from plants because it's got the little, uh, not plants, um, what is it? Um, boutonniere. I think it's that kind of thing because it's got the, oh, oh that went straight in there so it should be coming out. There we go. I'm just going to do a fine line right here and then put this on it. And really, I should have my silicone mat down so that I don't get glue on my counter. Oh, I just did that. Yep, you saw it, I did it. Well, it was good that I did it on my mat and not on my counter because then I would have to clean it up. <laughs> Woo, fumble fingers. Let's see if I can find a spot that's not all gluey. Goodness gracious, everybody say cut fumble fingers. That seems to be me today. There's still enough glue on there though to make it stick, so no worries. <laughs> there we go. All right, I'm gonna move that out of the way. Woo, good thing, yep, got nothing on there. So now we're going to take our baker's twine. And luckily, I don't have to look for a ruler, although my mat has a ruler on the edges anyways, um, but I don't have to worry about that. I can just use, all right, where's it starting? Here we go. All right, so they want us to cut about 22 inches. 
so ooh, I'm having a hard time all right so this is 18 plus 4 is 22 right I did my math right <laughs> It is kind of early and I am fumble fingers, so who knows? All right, so then for, for doing this circle here, I just usually use three of my fingers and wrap, <laughs> wrap it around. I'm having a good time today. Are you having a good time, Missy? <laughs> Are you laughing at me? Because I'm just like totally messing up. So then you want it just kind of a messy circle like that. And then we're going to put dimensionals on the back of this. Let's see, where is it going to go? So this is going all the way up against this edge, like that. So dimensionals, all right. Just wanna make sure I've got my dimensionals in the right places, like that. And, oh. All right, need it bigger. This is bigger, so I'm gonna do it around four fingers, like that. And then I don't like my edges sticking out on my card, so I'm gonna make sure that they are tucked in. All right, so here is a trick I'm going to show you, which I should have done it before. Let's use our glue dots to hold this in place. We're gonna use a glue dot. Normally what I would do is do run some Stampin' Seal Plus on it, and if we do this again with something else, I will pay closer attention to that. All right, but this will help it stay in place. that and then what I like to do is I kind of just like to put that end in there and this end as well ah here we go let's do it this way that way we have our ends where we want them all right so we'll just wrap it around like this I think we're gonna put some on the outside edge because we want it rounder mm -hmm. Your circle that you do, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. It can be whatever you want. It's just a kind of, I call it just a little bit of a messy look behind the tag, just to give it some other color. And it doesn't, it's, it's not designed to be perfect. It's designed to look a little bit messy. So then you can do this, stick that down there, and stick that there and stick this here. And we're just gonna keep going around in a circle and then around a circle. And then I'm just gonna loop this one back up because I don't like, like I said, I don't like my ends sticking out. And let's see. There, so it just kind of gives it a messy look. There's is a little tighter, but I kind of like that. Let's see, what do you think? Tighter or, <laughs> boy, this is not usually taking me this long. All right, let's see. See, I've got where I've got the dimensionals, but then, there we go. Uh... And then this end, I don't want showing either, so I'm just gonna attach it there like that. But see, then you have your dimensionals, so then you almost need to put your dimensionals here <clears throat> so that they catch. All right, so let's see. Yeah, okay, that looks a little better. Just my card, is it? Okay. Yeah, so you want to make sure your dimensionals are where it's going to hit on here so that it stays level. You don't want it to be in one of these grooves. All right, so. All right, there's card one. Sorry, that took a little bit longer with the ribbon trying to figure out how I wanted it. Sometimes, though, 
What I would do next time, if I were to make this card again, I would use the tape runner, put it on the back of that, get my ribbon down where I want it, and then put the dimensionals down. That's how I would do it. I was following theirs here and just putting the dimensionals and that, that didn't work quite so well for me. So now we have some gems. We have these iridescent rhinestones and if you really like these and you don't have the kit, we do sell them in a pack. All right, and they are carrying over, that's not them, they are carrying over. So you can get the iridescent rhinestones for yourself. And for this one, we're gonna use this putty end. And let's see, where does it say to put them? So we want two big ones. And let's see if I can figure out where they are. So one of them is over here. And the other one is over here. All right, and then three small ones. We have one over here. And sometimes I don't put it where they suggest to put it, and other times I do. It just depends on what I want. But I do like that they use an odd number as well, because when they use an even number, I don't do an even number. All right, you see, use seal for your twine. Yeah, it makes it easy. Yeah, I'm fumble fingers. <clears throat> you keep your pin in your glue holder as well. Yeah, I just have it here on the side. And because I was always having to grab it, so it was kind of like, well, I might as well just keep it right there because then I don't have to worry about it. So there's card one. I love it. It's beautiful. Beautiful. All right, I got to all right, so there's card one. Let's go on to card two. All right, so this one is card two. Let's get some things out of the way. Let's put this back over there, this over here. All right, so card two. We're going to flip this over here. Ooh, that's what those dots are for. All right, we got lots of stamping to do. They want... Oops, they want this open though, so you want to make sure to do that. So let's get our board back. We're going to be using this and this. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to get another block. I don't even need that big block. So we're going to be using that stamp and the Enjoy Your Day stamp. So this is where I like to bring in my smaller blocks and use those to grab instead of just using. And it's nice when you have more than one block because then you don't have to clean and remove and clean and remove everything right away. You can just play and stamp and then clean it all up afterwards. All right, so let's get to stamping. So we're going to do the enjoy your day. Let's turn it around the right way. Enjoy your day on this. And because it's a circle, it didn't matter where I stamped it because I can make it straight by turning it. So we'll set that aside, put that block over there. And now we have this one. All right, so they want us to have a bit of a space. It does kind of have a straight edge over here. So I'm going to start over here like that. Oh, looks like they've got it going, ah, like that. And then I'm going to turn it to kind of fill it in over there. All right. And then I'm going to Fill it in right here. You should probably stamp from one direction or the other. And I think I have a little bit of a larger space than what they are recommending, so I need to do a little bit of fixing. And I'm going to clean it off on my chamois. And then I'm going to just ink the top. Oop, that didn't get completely clean. That green sometimes is hard. So then I'm going to just go ahead and bring 
ink just a little bit of it and kind of fill in right here so that I have about the gap that they're looking for us to have. Close this up so I don't drop anything in it. And then we're going to take the black twine, the black twine, and they suggest 18 inches, and we're going to wrap it around this. All right. So, did you make your cards already? Or at least one set of cards already? Missy. <laughs> All right, it's on here somewhere. It's harder to see with the black. There it is. All right, just got to get it in the right direction. Where are, oh, 18 inches, which is the whole length of this. So we need one at 18 inches. Right. And then we are going to put some glue dots on the back here. Where'd my glue dots go? Um, I think for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and quickly use this instead of the glue dots. It's just a little quicker. And we're going to stick that down here, run that around, stick it over here, run that around to where we cross over. Oh, let's see. Cross over, and then you want to stick it here. And then it was a little much, so I'm just going to lay it down and stick that right there. All right, so we have this like that. They have theirs a little bit, their crossover is a little bit higher up. So I'm going to move, let's see, which way am I moving this? I'm gonna move this over a little bit. All right. And then they have a glue dot going there to hold it. So I'm going to go ahead and put a glue dot there to hold it. All right. There we go. All right. Now they want these to have, there we go. So this is sides. So we have this, we have this. We have this and we have these. So we're gonna flip those over. We're gonna flip this over. We're gonna flip this over. This is just calling for one glue dot. Whew. One glue dot. It's supposed to hold that whole thing on. We shall see. One glue dot right there. And then dimensionals on everything else. Oh, we need to put this down. I'm going to use the stamp and seal. Okay. I see what I mistook. I mistook those three dots on the back for placement. It was for sticking it down. But I'm going to go ahead and use my stamp and seal because I want to make sure it stays down. And sometimes with the ribbon, it doesn't always stay down so we don't want it all the way to the bottom we want it a little bit higher up like that all right I'm gonna press it down all right and then we want a dimensional on here let's see a little bit higher than the center glue dot dimensional on each of these little flowers. And then they have dimensionals on this one. So they have one at the top, one over here on the side, one over here on the side, and one over here. And I'm going to add one more right there. All right, so then we will put this down first. Typically when you're layering, you use the largest item first. So this is the largest item. 
and we want that coming across here looks like cherry blossoms which now's the time for cherry blossoms right well depending on where you live ours won't show up for a while <laughs> so then we want to put this down across here like that this is going to go on top of it I want to make sure there we go because I have the dimensional on this and the dimensional on this you want to make sure your dimensional fits below this otherwise it's going to be wonky instead of flush and flat all right and then we will be putting these on top of this. So this one goes here. This one goes here. And this one goes here, it looks like. All right. And there we have card number two. Whoops. Whoopsie daisies. We need our embellishments. All right. So again, we have two large ones and three small ones. So here's one large one. Looks like it's just out here. And then we have three small ones. Let's see. We have one here, actually, another large one over here and then we have a small one. Oh, that's a large one. Uh, we have one down here. So I need to move this because that was supposed to be a small one. So there we go. There we have card two. Beautiful absolutely beautiful I love it all right so we'll stick that in here like this and then of course you can stamp on the inside with anything that you want um, we have let's see what do we have here we have some flowers so we could stamp with that but I wouldn't use the green necessarily for the flowers and then you have this one as well and for today I'm not going to do the insides but you can do that if I do do them when I sit down and play with this kit I can show you next week what I did with the inside let's go ahead and do card three that is named incorrectly on the ingredients side but correctly over here all right so card three again we are using the dots on here and we're going to turn this sideways bring back our ink and our dots and it's showing us to use it uh, this way so ink it up one right here ink it up Turn it, one right here, and one right there. All right, those dots are kind of cool. They have a shape to me, I see shapes. Do you see shapes in clouds? Comment shapes if you see shapes in clouds. Katara and I do, Ron says it's just a cloud. <laughs> All right, so one of your, one of each. All right. So if you're hopping on, make sure you say hello. Your cherry tree is done blooming for the year already. Do you get cherries on your cherry tree or is it just one that blooms without producing fruit? I love cherries. That's my favorite fruit. What is your favorite fruit? I, mine, mine is definitely cherries. All right, so then they want um, glue dots on here, but I, this is where I'm pulling out my uh, glue. And going to do that. We'll move that out of the way and bring our card base that I forgot to fold. Bring our card base out and go ahead and do that. All right. And then we'll flip this over and put it on here like that. 
all right and then this one also has just the glue dots so I'm going to use a little bit of glue all right because it will hold and then where do they have it they have them peeking out the dots are kind of peeking out I guess mine aren't as high all right let's see do I have it like that there we go see now I would have thought they had this on dimensionals because it kind of looks like that in the picture but they've got it glued straight down with glue dots this one however has dimensionals so we'll put dimensionals on it and then we can make sure to and then this has dimensionals oops we forgot to do this one this is the sympathy card so I'll probably be making another sympathy card to give away um, next weekend when I go to the memorial for Grandma Jo she was my husband's dad's girlfriend partner um, for over 10 years and she was around ever since Kitar was born and ever since we got married and um, sadly she passed away and so her memorial is next week but she was she was a very special special lady very special lady so um, we've met her one of her daughters and her grandkids once well the grandkids a couple times because sometimes they would come with them to visit but it was they're just really special special people so I'm going my husband and I are going to Oregon next week Kitar is not able to miss school or track so I'm sure Grandma Jo will understand that he is not able to be there so it looks like they tied a bow so let's go ahead and get this and they want 12 inches. I'm just going to use my little 12 inches down here. And it looks like just a big bow. They don't really show what they do, but it looks like a bow popping out right there. So I'm just going to tie a big, loose bow. Um, that wasn't very centered. <laughs> Try that again and see what I can get. That's not very centered either. That's just too floppy for me. All right, so I guess it's supposed to kind of hang out. So I think 12 inches is too much. 10 would have been sufficient. So we have it hanging this way. So I'm going to use a glue dot to stick it down. I think that will be what works the best for that. So grab a, grab a glue dot and stick it, stick it down. And then you just put the knot of your bow that way. And then we'll just pull these down like that. It looks like rabbit ears, doesn't it? <laughs> It looks like rabbit ears to me. You could put a dot on here and put it around here, but I think I'm just going to go with this. It goes up here. No, nope, not right in the corner. Okay. So there we go like that. And then this one will go right on top of this one. It looks like. right there it looks like right on top of that one like that oh that is really a beautiful card I'm not sure about that I might actually I don't know I'm not I'm not thrilled with I'm not thrilled with that so I'll be making another one and I'm gonna figure that bow out a little differently I'm not sure I'm not sure but that just looks kind of funny hanging out that way and maybe it's just too long maybe I need to shorten those let's see yeah I don't know 
I'm not sure I like that part. I'm gonna do something, but I don't think I'm gonna do that part with it. I might just do the little spiral. Um, but I think that's a lovely card and I will definitely be making another one to give away um, next week when I leave. But I'll see you on Wednesday, so I'll show you how I, what I did with that, what I did differently with that. Um, it just looks, I don't know, it looks a little funny. Tell me if you think the bow looks funny or not. So you love playing the cloud game on road trips, right? We do that too. No fruit, not sure of your favorite. You do like cherries. Yeah, I love cherries. I love cherries. Um, sad that you don't have uh, cherries on it. We have a cherry tree back here, but it's the pie cherries. So they're not sweet at all. <laughs> and each year I just, I forget to go pick them because I'm not really a baker. Um, so apparently you're supposed to do something with them and lots of sugar and stuff like that. So hi Donna Nice to have you on here. Yeah, I think it looks funny too. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do I'm, I'm gonna look at it and see if doing the circle or just having a little bit hanging out there I don't know, but I think it's I think the card itself. This is lovely So I'll definitely be using this for next weekend and I'll show you what I make by Wednesday um, I'm going to be playing with this set a little bit later today, I think. And, um, yeah. So, I've got my box. I finally can do an unboxing. So, I've got a chiropractor. Oh, whoops. Forgot to do these. Um, this time, there's only three. They went a little minimal. So, one large one, which is right here. And then two small ones. One here and one down here all right this these are lovely I, I have to say these are lovely um, yeah I think I can't decide which one I like best um, I think one of I think these two are my favorite this one I'm like eh. so but that's kind of a good thing if this is kind of eh, because then I'll use these for alternates <laughs> But these two, oh, we already know I'm going to be making one of these, so I'll only have one extra. And this one, I really am going to see what it looks like using this, the other side, as a stencil. Um, so we'll see what I come up with for next week. We will also play with these dividers for next week and see what we can come up with and how we can create our divisors and what we can store in the paper pumpkin box. I've got an extra paper pumpkin box, so I'll be using it and extra goodies from paper pumpkin. So this is a perfect way to do this. All right, so I wish you all a great rest of your day. However, come back in a little while. I have, like I said, I have a chiropractor appointment that I'm going to get to. And then I'm going to do my live unboxing. And let's see, it's 10 o'clock. So let's say uh, noon. Noon my time. So that's um, 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central, 11 o'clock Pacific. <laughs> I will be back here. I'm, I'm learning all my time zones. I'm getting pretty good at it. It's, it doesn't take me as long to figure it out. Perfect timing for them to include a symptom, a sympathy sentiment for you. Yeah. So I'll see you all back here in two hours for a live unboxing of my new pre-order products with all the new colors and one of the stamp sets and, um, some other little things. I got another little package that I don't remember what I ordered. So that's always fun. I think maybe some envelopes or something. Not sure for card club. So I will see you all back here in about two hours. See you then. Have a good one. Bye-bye.